Did you like Sweet. introducing me, or did you like it when we each introduce ourselves, or should we introduce each other? I think we should introduce ourselves. I was kidding about the last one. <laughs> Welcome to episode two of the Myriad Show. I'm Danny Brown. Skylar Irvine, happy Myriad Monday. Got Jillian over here. Hoff is handling the cameras, all three and a half of them. First episode went well. Uh, we got a lot of feedback. Mostly it was same thing. It's too long. Let's get it shorter. <laughs> you guys are awesome, hilarious, handsome, but you just ramble on a little too long. We'll cut out as much as we can and keep this a lot shorter. We've got some better questions going on today as well. Unless you have anything to get started on, we can kick it off to Jillian and get started. Yeah, well, let's do it. Cool. All right, so my first question is, what is the best recent purchase you guys have made that you would recommend to others? I'm gonna jump in on this one because I was shocked with how much these actually have been awesome. These are the Apple EarPods. They announced them, they looked ridiculous. Of course I was gonna buy them because I'm an Apple guy, I buy everything Apple makes. The underrated thing about them is that this is Apple's secret answer to what we talked about last time with the smart home stuff, which was the Alexa and the Google Home. What's insane about these is that when they're in your ears, you kind of forget that they're there. You can control them by tapping them. They're with you everywhere you go versus the Google Home or the Alexa that you have to be near the box at all times. This does all of the same things and more, and then the little things it does without having to actually learn how to use them. Like you don't read an instruction manual, you don't have to like watch a YouTube tutorial, you just put them in, all of a sudden they just make a noise and they've synced and they're on your phone. You can turn them onto your computer or your iPad, and as you go throughout your day, you take one out, it stops whatever it's playing, you put it back in, it starts again. There's these little things where I just keep trying something to see like, will this work? And then it does, and I'm like I'm like re-impressed with it. How's the battery life on them? I've never had an issue. I have chargers everywhere, so that's not a big deal, but what's nice is the case charges them as well. So I don't know how long these actually last for or how long the case lasts for, but when they're not in your ears, you're putting them in your case and they're charging. And then if I need to, the case is charging in my car or charging at home. I've left my phone in my desk and walked around the office with these, playing a podcast, talking on the phone. I've, I've walked... noticed. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> they're, uh, it makes just using your iPhone incrementally better, hmm. which is a hard thing to do. So I was very impressed with the tech on these. I, they've exceeded my expectations. And so I do you think you're going to start seeing people with earbuds in their ears just all the time? Yeah, it's going to drive people nuts. Yeah. Where now you're going to start to see everyone with them and they're going to start to be different colors. I was very impressed with how much these have like impacted just something as little as talking on the phone or going for a run or listening to a podcast. It's just going to increase the amount of things that people consume. Very interesting. Uh, something that isn't a recent purchase for me but has made a huge difference in my life is a Roomba. I have a Roomba at my house. If you know anything about me, I'm a little neurotic when it comes to cleanliness. I hate clutter and dirt and just grime. And the Roomba is fantastic, especially the newer generation. I can control it from my phone and it does a really good job of cleaning your house in between deep cleanings. Do you have to buy a specific model depending on the type of flooring you have? Or no. is it like, okay. No, and it works the... on carpeting, it works on tile, hardwood. Our house is tile and it will run for 90 minutes. How much is a new one? So if you get the new one that's Wi-Fi enabled, it's a little bit pricey. It's like 900, yeah. between 900 and 1,000 dollars for me I was dust mopping my house every day yeah. and that would take 20 to 30 minutes you know how valuable is your time now I don't have to dust mop every day I just let that thing do its job and it saved me 30 minutes every morning just like the really nice vacuums you're spending like six hundred dollars oh yeah and it's hard to ever want to buy something that's this expensive to do more chores <laughs> yeah. like, it just doesn't seem it's like a hard hard it is to pull the it trigger is on. uh it's definitely a luxury uh, <laughs> um, but it helps me stay sane no totally and it definitely helps my relationship with Alyssa yeah. and our cats because I am not nearly as annoyed yeah <laughs> there's something to be said about that first year of marriage you're finally living together and it's a zero-sum game where it's like, well, if I don't do this, that means that person has to do this. So there's this point where you just feel like, I'm doing these things, and if I don't, they're never gonna get done. And then there's that like aha moment where you're like, oh, I could bring in a third party to come in and handle <laughs> these things. And 
we can live in bliss. <laughs> yeah. So it's like you bring in someone and it's like, yeah, they handle all these things that you yep. want to do. It's like, oh, okay, that's that's how people stay married longer. Alyssa calls it our staff. We have a house cleaner that comes every two weeks. We have a landscaper that comes every two <laughs> weeks. We have a pool guy that comes every week. And then we have a handyman who's basically on retainer and has a key to the house. So if anything breaks, he just goes <laughs> in and fixes it. So as long as they use you for real estate, it all evens out. I suppose, yeah. yeah. Probably not. <laughs> probably, probably not. Probably not. not. Okay. No. Okay. What else we got? Do you guys think that Open Door is a sustainable business model? For those of you who don't know how Open Door works and have never heard of it, it's a startup company and you can go on their website and say that you want to sell your home and they use an algorithm to base the value of your home and then they make an offer. Yeah, long story short, it's just a company that says, we'll buy your house cash, close in two weeks, and you can move on and go. For people that are looking to sell their house quickly, it makes sense because they can just move on and sell it. They're understanding that you're selling at below market value because where they're making up for it is speed. So they're paying cash, close quickly, and move on. So they have to buy it for a little less, and it's a volume play. In order for them to make money, they have to be doing it at a high scale of properties, and turning them over quickly is their best scenario. They make up a lot of their deficiencies by charging fees. Not totally what they're saying when they say, yeah, we'll buy it with no realtor fees. Well, yeah, there's other fees that they charge. Right. And there's always going to be companies out there that are looking to do things quickly. As far as long-term sustainability goes, it's difficult because you cannot factor in carrying costs. It's such a variable that is hard to predict, especially as you try to scale it into different markets. Something that might be an issue in Phoenix, then you go into Chicago and you try to run the same business model. Well, all of a sudden, you're not working and worried about air conditioners breaking, but you're worrying about radiators and snow issues with the roofs and stuff. So Absolutely. these variable costs change from city to city. And in order to be able to predict that, I mean, you're seeing with just these REITs that came in and bought all these residential properties to rent them out. Blackstone was one of them. The American Homes for Rent. Hi, Katrina. American Home for Rent, like they're going public and their numbers are showing that they're not profitable because they're so expensive to maintain. And there's not one way of doing it across the board because every house is its own thing. Right. So anytime you try to put your house into an algorithm or a model, there's too many unpredictable events in order to make it like a business algorithm that actually makes sense. For sellers that are looking to do open door, take a crack at a realtor first because with the amount of fees that they're charging and you know you're selling below market value, you, go with a real estate agent and yeah. price it below market value and do 6% and save yourself money. It'll sell just as fast. I always say this and it's hard for people to comprehend, but you can almost never price a home too low. If you do, the market will find it and you're going to end up with multiple people interested in your house. They're going to do multiple bids on the property. They're going to drive the price up. So if you go the open door route, I really think that you're costing yourself more than just selling it slightly below market value and that 8 to 12%. You're yeah, and at the very least, like with open door you're getting one investor's cash offer yeah. and in yeah. reality there's a lot of investors out there that will pay cash for properties that you might not be aware of and the second it goes up on the open market and people see it's undervalued yeah there's going to be cash investors on it because there's a lot more people out there than just open doors so you're almost limiting yourself to one quick sale when you could probably get in either a quicker sale more money mm -hmm. or a lot less stress and it's something that's definitely worth a shot they're an investor with a cool technology platform that's really all they are Cool. Let's go to the next question. Yeah. We'll talk to open door now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what book are you currently reading? So I feel like this should count for listening to a book on Audible and reading a book. But the one book I'm reading right now is called Thinking Fast and Slow. I got turned on to it because of Michael Lewis's newest book, The Undoing Project. Which I am currently reading. Okay, that book was really good. <laughs> yeah. It's a great read and I love Michael Lewis. Two of the guys he's writing about, this is a book that one of them wrote. And it is so dead and it's very tough to read. And I've been wow. reading it for a long time where it's almost like putting in work. It's really cool stuff, but essentially I'm kind of to the point where I'm just skimming through it because it could be like one long long magazine article that's stretched into a really thick scientific type book that's hard to digest. So I find myself kind of dreading going back to this book, which <laughs> isn't what you should do to a book that you want to read. But then I'm also listening to The Inevitable by Kevin Kelly um, on audiobook. And it's basically just predicting the future and talking about things that are inevitably going to happen, mostly internet and tech related. And it's and I really finished, fascinating That's stuff. funny. I just finished that book. Perfect. So we're just switching. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> and now I'm, I'm doing the undoing process. 
project, and it's funny, Alyssa's dad is also reading it at the same time. Which one? The Undoing Project. Yeah. He's a phenomenal one. author. He yeah, really great complicated author. Complicated subjects, so it, easy to yeah. listen to. Yeah, I really kind of like the story format. I'm not all the way through it, it's just still kind of talking about the introduction of the two yeah. psychiatrists, but it, it's pretty deep. And He's a really good storyteller, yeah. and it's like, he tells facts as if you're like reading a, a novel. It's really interesting, yeah. very good writing style. Yeah. Highly recommend it. The Inevitable, yeah. yeah. When I was going through that book, I was like, I hope that this stuff comes out before I die. Like, I cannot wait for AI to advance. I cannot wait for, for us to integrate machines into AI our into own. every single thing. Well, yeah. even one step further, integrating machines into our person. That's yeah. the only way that the human being will be able to keep up with AI is if we are like some sort of bionic person. Yeah, and it was interesting. <laughs> At one point he talked about if, as long as we can solve the problem of like living past like 140, which sounds like inconceivable, but a lot of those problems are like I don't know, I plan to live to 120 but now. So. They basically, once you get to that point, there's no reason you can't live to a thousand. That type of stuff to get your mind around just seems so weird. Yeah. But going back 200, 300 years ago and talking to people that were dying at 18, 19, 30, or 40 years old was an old person, telling them that the average lifespan's 80 plus now would seem pretty inconceivable. So right. it's really crazy stuff, but what I like about it is it, it doesn't really go on about like, should we do this or how should we do that? Basically, this is happening and, he, and how people react is going to be everything. Cause... Well, he also goes on to talk about how it's the current arms race right now, that all these different countries are focused on AI. Whoever gets super AI first will be so much further ahead than anyone else that they will dominate just in all. But is that aspects. a country thing or is that going to be more of a corporation thing? Because what if it's Facebook or Apple? Does that count as the US? Because that's a multinational corporation who sells products all over the world. Yeah. If anything is going to prevent future wars between countries, it's going to be those huge company being so ingrained in all these different places where the likelihood of a nation against a nation grows smaller and smaller. That's that's a good point. Maybe I'm overthinking it. <laughs> uh, what are you reading? Or what's the last good book you've read that you'd recommend? I'm not much of a reader, to be Do honest. Do you do audiobooks? No. Yeah. I just, like, I'll start a book and I can never finish it. Yeah, I think that's how you were for the longest time until you got into audiobooks. Yeah, audiobooks yeah. definitely help. We do so much driving, I you kind of get tired of listening to the same songs. So and I specifically Audible, the app, because I remember listening to a book before Audible came out and if you turned your phone off or something, you had to start the book over. Like, it wouldn't, oh, now there's yeah. chapters, it can keep your place, you can save bookmarks and oh, stuff. Yeah. And then with these things, you can just listen to them everywhere you go. That's cool. <laughs> okay, that's cool. it for me, Red Monday. Yeah. We tried. We did our best. A little bit less pizzazz than on a Friday. We got a lot of work to do. We definitely wanted to get this out. Let us know if you have any questions specifically you want answered. We will credit you in the show. Uh, please leave comments, like, share, and we appreciate you. Thanks for watching. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye.